keep it down right now because as I'm filming this part, my baby is still asleep and I don't want to wake her up. But this is the illusion mesh that I'll be using. And it is my absolute favorite when it's on skin. You can barely see it. Um, I'll probably include some pictures so you guys can see what it looks like on skin. Um, this is the color brown sugar. And I purchased this from Gail K in Atlanta. So if you are in Atlanta, definitely stop by. Or if you know somebody in Atlanta, get them to send you some of this. It's $8 a yard and it is the best. Okay guys, so basically, um, if you have a professional dress form that has all the, the guides for you to follow, like the princess scene, center front, all that good stuff, then that is perfect. I don't have that. I have basic dress forms. I have three. One is a size four. This one is adjustable. And then I have a plus size adjustable. I mean, you see this one is messing up and everything, but it still freaking works, so I don't care. One thing I would recommend when you're using these type of dress forms, they rarely have full bust curves. So I would get a padded bra just for this purpose alone and use that to do your darts because you don't really get that curve when you do your darts on flat dress forms like this. Could not get that out. We're gonna take our mesh and what you're gonna do is you are going to find the way that it stretches. It stretches this way. One thing you'll notice though is when you stretch it, it pulls this part up. See, it's like it shrinks it up. So we don't want to use it this way. We are going to flip it and use it to where the stretch runs up and down. So the bust will be the fullest part. So we want to make sure that this covers over the bust. My um, client is 36 bust and a 34 waist. Make sure that it comes up to the shoulder seams. And what I'm gonna do is pin right there. And pin right here for now. I'm gonna smooth down the middle. And I'm going to place a pin right here. And a pin right here. Okay. Smooth this. Place a pin right here. Smooth this. And place a pin right here. So now you have it smooth right here. That doesn't matter right now. For this one, we're gonna do a V-neck, but this will work for any type of cut that you want to do. So to make this easier, um, you see this is kind of heavy. I'm just gonna cut down the side and cut a little lower than the waist just, just to get rid of some of this fabric. So to make it easier for me to do my darts. Okay, so now we're working with a square piece of fabric and honestly what you can do is go off of your measurements and measure out a square, maybe about two inches larger than whatever it is that you plan on doing, like say, my girl is a 36 bust, so this would be 18 inches wide plus, yeah, because the widest part is the bust. So 18 inches wide plus maybe about two inches. So I would do it about 20 inches wide. Okay. You know, do the same for the length. You can do that or you can do it this way. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make my okay. side darts. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is basically, I'm gonna turn it sideways a little bit for you. I'm gonna, Grab this fabric up on the side. And see, so you can use the bra as a guide so you can make it even. I'm going to even this up to the top of the bra. And now what I would do is place pins in it to hold it, but instead I'm going to fold it down and pin it because I will be putting lace over the mesh. So I'm going to hand sew my darts down. Normally, I would just pin them and then I would take them to the sewing machine, right side out, sew it, fold them down, top stitch, and then I'll be done. And even if your lace won't come all the way over here to cover your darts, if you neatly do a top stitch with um, a needle and thread, then that will be fine as well. So you can just make sure that it's pulled tightly. And I'm going to pin through that, and then I'm going to go up here.
is the tricky part. Let me, okay, I'm gonna pin that right there. Mm hmm. So, as you can see, I just made a dart. I'm gonna repeat the same on this side. So now what you're gonna notice is that you have all this loose fabric right here. Take this and pin it in place on the sides because you want this to go straight down flat. And this will help you develop your dart easier. You have this pin already that goes straight down. So what you're gonna do is gather it in. Some people do their darts at an angle. Some people do them. Um, if it's just different, people do them different ways. And I'm running out of pins. Okay. And again, normally I would take this and put my pins through like this. Hold it. And then I'll just... Um, sew with my sewing machine along here and then I fold it in and top stitch and you always fold this down what I do I always fold the insides in this part down but I'm not doing that Then basically you're gonna repeat the same thing for the other side. Okay, y'all. Um, let me say this real quick. My baby is playing talking Tom. Well, talking Angela on her tablet. It's like a little cat that you um gotta take care of, feed it and stuff. You know, like we used to do with the Tamagotchi. And she keeps slapping the cat. So that's what you guys are hearing. But it's sounding really, really weird right now. So I don't want y'all thinking like, okay, what in the world's going on over there? So what I'm gonna do is take my needle and thread and I use this color thread, which is similar to my fabric. Eat your apples. And I'm gonna start right here because I'm only gonna go a half an inch below the waist anyway. Okay, so I have that done. I did one, two, three, four darts. And now I'm going to take my shears and I'm going to cut out my V where I want it to stop, and I'm going to cut out my arm side. So it's basically around here. Do this first. And I'm only gonna do one side because I'm going to fold it and match it up. So I don't wanna go too far down. I know I would want my arm holes to start about right there so what I'm gonna do is go up here and I'm going to follow okay Katie that's enough I'm going to take it up actually I would want my seam right here so I'm gonna go a half an inch over Pull that tight, and I'll clean this up when it's off, of course. Then I'm gonna go a half inch over from where I want my seam to be. And I'm going to go a little past my shoulder seam, a half an inch past my shoulder seam. And I'm going to cut Cut a little past my shoulder Please. thing. What, baby? Please. Please what, mama? Please. I don't know what you want. So what I like to do is take ribbon to use as a guide. I want my shoulder seam to stop right there. So I'm gonna go a half an inch over from that. And then I want my V to come to about right here. So 
what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut a half an inch over from that. So I'm gonna start that right here. So I'm gonna go set, set right here. And this will show me where my middle is when I'm matching it up. And I'm gonna eyeball about a half an inch over. Uh oh. You want this? Pin it. This will be pulled tight. I'm gonna pull this a little tighter. One thing I hate about mesh. Okay, and then I'll cut that. The reason why we do a fourth of our bust measurement is because if we were going to go from here to here, that would be a half, but we are going to measure from here to here just to make sure that we are on track. And I would need this to be nine. And then I'm gonna have, add mm, a half an inch. So I'm going to mark that if I can find a pen. Okay, so now let's do the same for our waist. The measurement is 34. A fourth of that is 8.5. So from the waist. Uh -oh, where am I at? 8.5, nine, so this is actually perfect. And I'll just clean it up. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to pin right above my waist measurement. This Line right here marks my waist on this dress form. What I'm gonna do is go about a half an inch below that to straighten this out. And actually, I'm only gonna do to the middle as well because again, this will help me to fold it accurately so I can make sure both sides match up perfectly. Need my scissors sharpened. In the middle, there we are. Is that the middle? No, yeah. mom's. No, mom. Hmm? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now what we're gonna do is, oh, wait, I'm gonna cut this excess off of here. That's another mistake I used to always make, leaving way too much fabric up here and then it droops. Okay, so now that that's done, we're gonna flip this around and we're going to do the back before we take it off. So again, make sure that it stretches this way. And that up there. Mama. Oh, have I? I can't hold you, baby. <laughs> okay, so once I have this pin, what I'm going to do is half an inch under my waist. I am going to Just to get this out of my way again. I'm going to So I know I needed to add how much in the waist? 
for my dress form. 0.25 for each seam. Yeah, that's about right. And the breast. Okay, so now that I have that pin, I'm just going to even this up. Okay. So I'm just basically, uh-oh, cutting this. I'm trying not to block the camera. to see where I need this to be. It's so hard doing it that way, guys. This is hard, period. Doing it over here. Okay, so. What pin? Do it without. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna make a snip right here just to match these two up. And then do a snip to match this up. Okay guys, so I'm a little out of frame here, but basically all I'm doing is cutting from the shoulder seam to the back of the zipper creating a curved neckline in the back. I always like to cut in a little bit at the top when I'm doing a V-neck because it'll pull it in tighter. So when you do that and the zipper closes, it'll pull this in a little tighter, pulling this, which will pull your V up if it's a little slack in it. And I also like to take a little bit off So that'll pull tight as well. And it kind of helps to reduce um, that sway back when you have the wave zipper. Or you can cut up a little bit at an angle. So I'm going to do that as well. And you know you can clean it up when you... I'm going to clean it up when I'm done. Okay, so I'm going to... Okay, so now the hard part is basically done, which is your draping. Oh wait, I forgot I have to cut this piece. Okay, so the hard part is done. You have your front piece, or half of your front piece, which you fold over to cut the other half. And then you have your back piece, which you use to cut out your other back piece. You don't have to do any darts on this or anything. Yeah. Y'all, it is so hard to see what I'm doing right here on this table. So what I'm going to do is lay this down and do this over it so you guys can see a little better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this. The tip of your V that you cut and then the bottom will show you exactly where your fold should be. Now I'm going to pin down here, keep that in place. And I'm going to pin in the middle of my V. Sorry, I had a pin in my mouth. Wind this up. Here. And I'm gonna kind of 
pucker this up a little bit so it so come on, your bus curve. Okay, so now I feel like I have enough pins in it to cut it. So now I'm gonna basically just even this out. Everything will be even. And we have our front piece. Okay, so now we're going to take our fabric and we are going to make sure again that it is stretchy way up and down. This should be enough for him. Also make sure by filling it, okay, the inside is down. And I'm going to match the rough sides of the fabric. And this is cut so jagged, but that's okay because I'm gonna clean it up now. So just pop a couple pins in it. Ow! Don't pop pins in yourself. Pop a couple pins in it just to keep it in place. You don't have to be perfect. In case I'm gonna cut this out. to take this up a little bit more because I couldn't really cut it like I wanted to but I want this slanted just a tad now we're going to cut out our side and finally we're going to clean up our armhole So now I'm going to take this pattern. Um, you can easily make your own sleeve patterns. I usually do. I usually do make my own sleeve patterns, but I got this template from my sewing group that I always talk to you guys about. And it's Kamatia. Kamatia, I want to say. I don't know. So anyway, I just like to use this as a guideline now because it is a really, really nice fit. Okay, so now we're going to take this. And this time we're gonna do the opposite of what we did on the bodice. We are going to find the way that it stretches. Oh, not that way, this way. I'm gonna go down here where it's a tad bit neater. Okay, stretches this way. So we are going to fold it that way. So it will have a little bit of stretch for the arm. I'm shipping this out of state, so I do want it to have a little bit of a stretch. Okay, the widest part of her arm is 14 inches, which is her bicep. So I'm gonna divide that by two and that's gonna give me seven inches. So I'm gonna make sure this is at least seven and a half inches to accommodate for my seam allowance and we are good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this pattern on the fold And I'm going to pin it. Um, one tip I would give you is to keep your pins that you use to pin your paper separate than your pins that you use to pin maybe appliques and 
and everything else because it will dull them and they will snag your fabric. Okay, now what I'm going to do is put something slightly heavy on it just to kind of keep it in place. Most people use washers or um, pattern weights, but I don't have any. So, okay, let's see. I'm gonna locate my elbow. Mark my elbow by that. My wrist is down here. I always go a little bit longer than this. And then my bicep is about right here. This is right under the armpit. So I'm gonna measure out first, I guess, my wrist since I'm doing it this way. I usually do it reverse, but I'm gonna do it this way. So my wrist is seven inches, so I'm going to divide that by two. That gives me three and a half inches, plus my seam allowance, which is four. Now, if this wasn't stretched, you always want to make sure that you cut about two inches, well, about an inch and a half to two inches more than what your wrist measurement is because they have to fit their hand through. I've made that mistake so many times. Okay, so now I'm gonna go up to where my elbow is. And I usually like to take um, bicep to elbow, elbow to wrist measurements. Then we go up to the elbow and that is 12. So 12 divided by two is six plus our half an inch seam allowance. So we're gonna So now we're gonna go up to our bicep. Bicep measurement is 14, so that will be seven. So we're gonna do seven and a half. Move. Oh, you you help it. Okay. I got them fighting knuckles. <laughs> that is embarrassing. <laughs> okay. No. So we're doing seven and a half. What did I say? No. Yeah, seven and a half. Oh, seven and a half. Actually, I'm going to pop a couple pins into this because I'm going to be using this to cut my second arm. <clears throat> So now I'm gonna put this away because I am done with that. <clears throat> Move that out the way. <clears throat> okay, so now making sure this is wide enough. Yes, it is. So we are going to grab a couple more pins, first of all. Okay, so now I did that. I just basically went back and stitched over where I hand sew. Y'all, usually my hand sewing is a lot neater than this. I don't know what the heck this was today, but whatever. So I'm just gonna remove those stitches. 
Okay, so we're gonna locate our outside and we're gonna have that facing up. And then we're going to take our two back pieces. You guys probably can't see this at all. This is basically uh, the outside and I have the outside facing up. And then I'm gonna face the outside of the back pieces down. All I'm going to sew first is along my shoulder seam. So I'm going to do one pin. Sewing mesh. Uh oh, wait, that's definitely not right. One pin. And a second pin. I'm going to do the same over here. So I'm going to sew along the top right here, and then I'm going to sew along the other shoulder seam. Okay, guys, so now we have the front and the back attached to each other. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a small zigzag stitch along here just to reinforce. And then I'm going to trim the excess. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my sleeve um, my arm hole and I'm going to take my sleeve I like to put my sleeve in before I don't do the drop sleeve I like to put my sleeve on before and then just sew down the inside seam of the sleeve all the way down to the inside seam of, I mean the side seam of the bodice so let me find each part of the outside sometimes it is hard okay so this is the outside, so I'm gonna do right sides facing. I'm going to uh, mark the middle of my sleeve while it was folded. And I'm going to place that on my seam of my shoulder. Then I'm going to match up the end of the sleeve Well, the end of the armhole to this side, and I'm gonna do the same on this side. I hope this is not confusing. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it over because it's easier for me to pin the rest of it. One thing about mesh is it's so hard to keep pins in it. So what you would normally do is take it and kind of pull it and pin along the curve of the armhole. But I'm not gonna do my pins, I'm just gonna put it in my machine itself. I'm gonna sew a half an inch away from the edge. Let's see if I can get you guys a clear shot. Okay. to match it up as I sew. And I have this on a um, I have this on a tension of four. I could not think of the word just there. And a st stitch length of 2.5. to meet that. Whatever works best for you, um, and, and you'll find it with time, like what works best for you in sewing mesh and just sewing any different fabrics in general. And now we are at our 
our shoulder seam and now we just have to do the other part which is the front so we're going to kind of match that up Probably still slip out. Uh -uh. See, mesh is so tricky, guys. Like, it's so delicate and flimsy and all of that stuff. So you gotta kind of figure out how to maneuver it. attached this is the shoulder seam this and this is the sleeve okay so now I'm gonna repeat this and then I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like on the dress form. okay so just to kind of show you guys where we are now with this the sides are still not sewn up but I just wanted you guys to get an idea of what we just did I know it may be slightly confusing. So basically what we just did was we sewed the front to the back. We attached the sleeves right here and they are still open, but what we're gonna do is, make sure I'm in frame because I'm always out of frame. We're going to so from the sleeve to this underarm seam down to the waist. I just think it looks a lot better and it's a lot easier in my opinion. Okay, so guys, that's what I'm about to do now. The first thing I'm gonna do is pin the underarm seam. in the waist and then the same at the end of the arm and again if you are more of a beginner I would highly recommend putting more pins in between these but once you started doing so much you just you know you just do what you do So basically what I'm doing now, um, you can leave it raw if you want to with this type of fabric, but I'm doing a small rolled hem, which is basically me taking the fabric and rolling it 
to create a tiny hem. This is more of an advanced technique and I would not recommend it if you've never done one before. if you know how to use one eye suck at that so I'm just going to stick with this and I'll see you guys when I'm done because I'm almost out of storage okay guys this is basically what we ended up with I did a roll cam on this um, darn near impossible to do a roll of him in the V so I just simply rolled it to as far as I could and then just top stitch over the fabric and then pivoted and rolled again all the way to the end. This is where my lace will go on top of this but you guys just wanted to know how to do the base. I'm going to save the placing the lace um, I'm going to save the part with me placing the lace for another video. So I went on ahead and added my zipper. That's another video as well. I don't want to make this one too long. And yeah. And you see how since we did this, the, you know, since we took it up some in the back, now when it meets the bottom, it'll pull so you won't have the wavy zipper. Okay guys, so I really hope that you found this video helpful. I know it was long, but honestly, if you want thorough, then you're gonna have to deal with length. Um, if you guys have any questions, as always, feel free to ask me in the comments, or you can message me on any one of my social media pages and I will gladly help you. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. All right, see you guys in the next tutorial.